What's up, everybody? And this is Hindsight is 2020, presented to you by the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast. I'm your host, the master of Black Negro Jitsu, Lil Ross Steppen. And uh, this is a little video uh, presentation that breaks down the latest events, DraftKings happenings, winning lineup, roster construction, strategies, head strategies, all that stuff, regrets, everything that um, I kind of, all my thoughts post-event, I'm going to do them right here. And I also wanted to talk about a an idea that's kind of going or start circulating throughout the MMA world in great, uh, con- well, in great numbers, you know, following the event, late swap. So late swap or no, nah, that's the uh, title of this video. We're going to get into that, uh, but uh, before we do, I've got to kind of get into my sponsor. You got to know that the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast and all of its fantasy content is presented to you by Ball Club Box. Ball Club Box is an apparel company. They uh, allow you, they are monthly gift box services that uh, provides quality, license, no bootleg, Licensed sports merchandise that reflects their customer support for their teams. Now, what you can do is you can go to the site and there are three different formats of boxes. You can get two different boxes that are one month or you get one that's an actual three month subscription. What you do is you can get the club box for $55. That's that's going to give you $75 worth of apparel and 10 hand-picked items by the people at random at Ball Club Box. That's hats, that's blankets, bobbleheads, helmets, baseball hats, just anything you can think of. They're going to come and provide you with everything for your favorite sports team. You'll be able to fill your room up. That's the Club Box. $55 worth of apparel or $55 subscription for $75 worth of licensed apparel. The Executive Club Box is $75, uh, but it's going to provide you with $125 of licensed apparel. And if I'm not mistaken, an extra team. Oh, yeah, yeah, three teams, not two. You only get two with the club box, but you get three teams with the executive club box. And then lastly, we've got the ball club season pass. That's $145 for three, basically three executive club boxes. So that's essentially $225 dollars worth of apparel if my math is correct yes it is so 225 dollars worth of apparel there i think that's the best deal that's a whole season's worth of, of of trinkets to fill up your i mean stuff for you your kids your family uh for the whole season pass um it's a hell of a deal i think that's the best deal the way to go is the ball club season pass but thank you to ball club box for being our premier sponsor Big ups to you guys. Hell of a product, and I'm happy to be associated with them based right out of my hometown of St. Louis, Missouri. All right, so uh, let's get on with it. Let's get into UFC Fight Night 107. And uh, it was absolutely disastrous for most people, except me, because <laughs> I didn't like Tom Breeze. Uh-uh, I didn't like him. I didn't think, I think that uh, Alu Uluwali Van Boshe is probably the better technical striker between the two. And he's also a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. So Tom Breeze is no better of a striker than Cesar Ferreira. And he's really no better on the ground. So how is he going to finish that fight at $9,000? I feel like Tom Breeze was overpriced. I wanted exposure because the way I was building my lineups, I was having like the same, I, I was, because I've learned from past events, I would have the structure right. But I would get that, I would miss, miss a guy in that price range. So I remember when Hector Lombard just barely missed knocking out uh, Dan Henderson. It was another guy in his price range that got that first round knockout. I was like, man, if I would have had some hedges, like in that price range hedges, I would have killed that night. So that I do that a lot is price range hedges in different parts of my roster construction around my core. and. Uh, yeah, Tom Breeze. I had like two Breeze lineups because I know he's going to be super popular. He was 48.5% owned 
He uh, but I beat the field because I only had fifteen percent on. If you if you don't know why he dropped off though, um, he had some type of irregular heartbeat, and he felt like he wasn't fit to compete, and so he said, uh, "No, sir." And I, I don't blame him. I mean, your health comes first. But um, yeah, that was disastrous because. 48.5% of people didn't have a chance to adjust their lineups, which mean their money went down the drain. So guys like Sun Tzu, thousands of dollars of entries blown up. Man, that sucks. You know, all the different contests, you got a feel for those high dollar players. Um, there were, And then also there was another fight that dropped off. I was rambling about how I didn't believe in Tom Breeze, but Brett Johns versus Ian Inwistle dropped off, and I had 100% Brett Johns. So I'm going to all these to get some White Castle burgers. The look, they sell them in a the six pack at all, and they got cheese on them, and you can just get them there. I think it's very. I think at White Castle, if you get six, it would be like five dollars or something like that. You go get them at all these, it's like three twenty nine, and they just as good. But anyway, I was going to get some White Castle burgers, and I look at my phone. And they're talking about Ant Whistle versus Brett Johns is canceled, and he's got a PPD buys. I'm like, what? I didn't even believe it because it's a Saturday morning. And I had made my lineups. My tradition is to wake up like 5 in the morning, me eat some donuts because I don't get to eat no sweets throughout the week because I'm on a diet, right? Me eat some donuts and make my lineups, right? I'm, I made my lineups 5 o'clock in the morning, made 13 good lineups, boom, put them in. You know what I'm saying? Went. Got my little white, I, I, I took a nap, got my little white castle burgers. And sure enough, my lineups are trash now because Brett Johns is out. So I got to find a pivot. So I withdrew all 13 of my lineups because I, the way I build my lineups, I, I built it like handpicked hedges. And so now I had to change my exposures to everybody. So Johns was a core in my lineup along with... Brad Pickett and Corey Anderson, which is, yeah, that, that core is absolutely, oh, and Leon Edwards, too. Leon Edwards was a heavy play of mine. So those were the four fighters I was kind of building around. I really believed in Pickett and Anderson. I That was disastrous. So I built great lineups. I, I made a mistake with that. We'll talk about that later. But, um, yeah, I had to rebuild, and our first thought that comes to my mind is just switch to Gunnar Nelson. That's the play. I didn't like, I like Gunnar Nelson, but I wanted somebody, I thought Juban was tough, and I didn't think he was a pushover, and I was like, okay, he's not a scrub. I think he's going to be in this fight, and it might be a, 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 a tedious striking fight. Let me go with Joe Duffy. And Joe Duffy didn't get the fit. I mean, Joe Duffy beat the sleeves off of Ray's Madati. He put a worse beating, I think, overall on, on Madati than, than Gunnar Nelson did to Juban because Juban just caught, uh, I mean, uh, Gunnar, Gunnar just caught Juban and then it was over. But, you know, Ray's Madati was never in that fight. And he didn't muster any offense. It was just a beatdown, except for that one takedown he got. Other than that, it was just a beating from bell to bell. That's kind of, I, I kind of thought Juban would put up more resistance, and, and I think he did. But, yeah, I wish I would have just followed my first mind, I guess. But I ended up switching to Duffy. Duffy got the win, and I rebuilt my lineups. And the only regret I have is really Corey Anderson because Brad Pickett, he was doing exactly what I thought he would do, which is beating the, 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 the sleeves off of uh, Marlon Vera. I mean, he won the first round. He won the second round convincingly, no question about it. And he gets to the third round against a opponent that's not really, it's not that he lacks danger, he's just growing. Marlon Vera is young, he's still developing, and he has a lot of gifts. He's a gifted young man. He's got good jujitsu, he's got good, um, he's got good athletic ability. He's just got to grow and get his fight IQ and his strategy down. But against a guy like Brad Pickett, he should lose that fight. Especially with all, you know, that was Brad Pickett's last fight in front of his home uh, town. No way Marlon Vera at this point in his career should be walking away with that win, right? So Brad Pickett and, and, and Corey Anderson were staples. And, oh, and Arnold Allen. Those were the staples of my lineup, you know? Well, I hedged Arnold Allen. So let's say... Brad Pickett and Corey Anderson. There were no hedges on them. Um, Brad Pickett let me down. Not by a lot. He scored 41 points in a loss. So that shows you that he really performed well. If he would have just 
held on a minute longer. He scored 70 points. And my only real mistake on the night is actually Corey Anderson. I should have had some manure hedges. And maybe I can take down the tournament, possibly. Um, My highest score on the weekend was, uh, let me look there. It was 367, I think. And, oh, no, no, it wasn't. It was 395, okay? And that consisted of Brad Pickett at 28, 25% ownership, Gunnar Nelson at 32% ownership, Leon Edwards at 21% ownership, Mark Diacasey at 30% ownership, Corey Anderson at 48% ownership, and Arnold Allen at 25.2% ownership. The only dud in that lineup is, of course, one Corey Anderson, who I thought would at least score 40 or 50 points, even in a loss he always has. I felt like he was super safe. Uh, he was going to at least outwork Manua for a couple rounds, you know? Uh, but I didn't respect that knockout power of Manua enough. I, I said if Manua can't knock him out, he won't outwork him. And he went out and just knocked him out in the first round. And that was shocking. I was not expecting that. But that was, that's my fault. I should have hedged that. I should have had more. I knew that was a possibility. I just, like, said, nah, not happening, you know? Uh, this is Beast in 25-8 here. We can kind of trust him, or I kind of do. And at least against Jimmy Manu, I didn't feel like he was that dangerous. But, man, is Manu on a roll. I don't have any regrets outside of not hedging manure. I should have had four or five manure lineups. It was a main event. I knew, I, I, I hate when I do that, when I know that there's a possibility that something can happen and I don't respect it enough and I say, screw it, I'm all in on this. You know, like in, on fight cards like this, dealing with fighters at this level, you don't do that. You know, you don't trust Corey Anderson to, to win you a, a, a uh, uh, money. You don't trust Makwan Americani to win you money. You don't even trust Arnold Allen. You make sure you hedge those spots like that, and you build around the consistent veterans. That's why Brad Pickett was a staple in my lineup, because I know what he is at this point in his career, and I thought he was better than Marlon Barrett, and he was for two rounds. Um, damn. You, you, you build around Gunnar Nelson. You build around a guy like maybe Leon Edwards. I loved him at that price point. In my original constructions, I think he was in most lineups. I really, yeah. Uh, I actually lowered my exposure to him because according to the price, the way the prices was working out without chimes, I kind of, I wanted people at the top. I didn't, I, I felt like the bottom of my lineups was good. I had Corey Anderson and Pickett. I felt really good about them. And uh, I, I wanted Ju Bannon if he would won. And I, I wanted them guys because I know that that free up salary. And if Duffy gets a knockout or Nelson gets a knockout, then I got like, you know, I got the remedy there. You know, everybody's got uh, Gunnar Nelson in their lineup or 35 percent of people do. And then I've got Ju buying up of that. So I wanted a little Ju Bannon exposure. Uh, I almost wanted I should you know what I should have done is had some cutie Loga exposure because fights like that where there's this wide Vegas gap and it's a very close, weird fight. You always want that underdog, just like Francis Amar Barroso. I should have played some Barroso. Uh, I picked him originally, but after he looked like a wimp when he got his eye hurt, I was like, oh, no, Barroso doesn't look right. And he he almost lost that fight, but uh, he, he pulled through. I wish I would have had some Barroso. As a matter of fact, to tell you the truth, Last event, I'll tell you why I didn't have any Bohosa. Last event, guess what I did? 100% Bohosa. And he got TKO in the first round. Well, I mean, it was overturned. But I went 100% Bohosa. I believed in him that much. And he goes out and wins this time around. So, uh, that's my thing is that... Uh, I just, um, yeah, man, when you get burned like that, it's hard to go back to the well. 
So I went with Leon Edwards this time. That was my guy. Man, I mean, that's why you got to have short memories in daily fantasy sports. But on to the uh, the main event of uh, this uh, this podcast, which is going to be Lay Swap or No. And I'm going to say that Lay Swap, uh, after the Tom Breeze debacle, I'm saying no. To a certain extent, I think if people want Lay Swap, it shouldn't be past the fight pass portion of the card. And I don't even like it in the fight pass portion of the card. I would say maybe the first, like, Maybe past the first fight, no late swap. Because if you want late swaps, there needs to be late swap specific events, okay? We cannot have it where sharps are sitting there and getting chances to build around. They've got 100 lineups. There's only 26 fighters, right, on a card. You, well, 24 to 26 fighters, 12 to 13 fights. And all of the sharp guys and... I consider myself a sharp guy. I go and watch all the film and do all the research. You put in a whole bunch of lineups and you get a chance to, you get that fight pass knockout, right? And then you get another one. All the sharps start adjusting, putting the puzzle pieces together. Ooh, move this over here, move that over there. The cash line would skyrocket. It would be crazy, okay? It would be nuts. You would have ridiculous, like, cash lines. There would be million-way ties. Like, late swap, it would have to be something where it's, like, the first 10 minutes of the event. And then past that, you can't do it. But you can't have people late swapping during the event. If you want, I mean, that's a whole different game. Now, roster construction, I mean, that means that you have to sit down and watch the entire fight card and be flipping your lineups Court. And then when people have millions of lineups, let's say they have a core of early fights that turn out well for them. All they got to do is start hedging the early lineups. And so they put one main eventer in this one and one main eventer in that one. They got 100 lineups, so they got three good ones. They can get those three good ones perfect. The Sharks would do it. And you just don't want to see that. So Lay Swap, I think it's a great idea. But I think it needs its own contest. You know, don't put the lay swap universal. I would say lay swap shouldn't go past the first fight in regular contest. It just should never happen. Even then, it would kind of it would change the game. So maybe a 10-minute window to make sure if we get a fight or drop off that we could deal with that. Or maybe even, you know, if something happens during an event and a fighter gets sick, you could have substitutions and reserves. But you know, I think that's kind of all a part of it. So I would be down for the substitution idea that you could have, um, you know, like one emergency substitution for some type of freak injury or something like that. It, people put a lot of money in this stuff sometimes. Well, they want a lot and then they have a lot of vested in this. There's no way that you should be losing thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars, even $30, whatever you're putting in, because a fighter pulled out after the event started because of a health issue. That is disastrous. So DraftKings, we got to find a way to, to deal with this, but you got to be careful because lay swap would mean changing the, the game to a bad extent. That would mean that everybody would have to sit around their phone and they would have to watch their lineups and when somebody got knocked out, you have to start switching your lineup up because everybody sharp would be doing it, you know. So I, I don't want to see that happen. I'd say late swap. It has to be like a 10-minute, 15-minute thing. I wouldn't say 15 because then the first fight pass fight is over. So 10 minutes. And if nothing happens within 10 minutes, if we get a disaster within 10 minutes, then cool. You know, so I'm down for... 10-minute lay swap, which would mean you have to keep fighter ownership secret for 10 minutes, too. So, um, that's another thing. So, I like I like that idea. I, I, I used to think lay swap was kind of a cool idea, but that would change the game too much, man. That would make sharp. That would mean that everybody that's sharp and sitting around their computer watching every fight is going to be able to just, just kill it in, like, every event, and that's not right. That's not the way the game should be played. You make your lineups, and then it's over. 
Uh, NBA late swap, I think, is a good idea. A fight night late swap, that would be crazy. That would that would basically take the the normal person and put them out because now the sharps would start building like early early their lineups around the order of the fight card. You know, like that would be too crazy, man. So people would build fight pass lineups and preliminary card lineups with hedges, and then they would switch in the key fights based off what happens on the preliminary fights. Like, don't let that let that happen. So, uh, at me, Laura Stephan, I'm saying nah to late swap. 10-minute uh, window, don't let top dogs get into late swap. That would be an absolute disaster. <sighs> That's my opinion. Uh, it, it has to be limited because it's just, it, it, it changes the whole game into something crazy. So, Lace Swap, I think it's a good idea to an extent, but if people want to play Lace Swap MMA, let them have their own contest. Maybe do, um, you could do a 20 limit entry or something like that, Lace Swap only. You know, let people that want to get into that, get into that and see how popular it is and grow it as it goes along. But don't change the MMA fantasy game to be Lace Swap only. That's, that's doo-doo in my eyes. That's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Tweet me at and DFS or just type in Black Negro Jitsu. That's my name. You can't miss that one. That's a unique name. Uh, that's who I am. Master Black Negro Jitsu. What's my first name? Black Negro. What's my last name? Jitsu. All right. So uh, we're going to be, uh, I'm probably going to be doing a couple other podcasts. I don't know if I, I might get a, some 210 fighter interviews. I might try and get with Brian Levick and try and get him get on some fighters for this UFC uh, 210 card. I don't know. I don't know if I need to exactly, but we'll see. Uh, I'm trying to do the race MMA matters with Tyron Woodley. I'm looking forward to that one. Hopefully, I'll be able to get a hold of him soon through his boxing coach. Um... I got to get a guest fighter for the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast for UFC 210. Don't know who I'll get quite yet, but I'll be doing that pretty soon. Well, I'll think of some content. And then, uh, of course, maybe I'll be doing a pro wrestling thing uh, coming up. WrestleMania is coming up, so maybe I'll debut the MMA Edge uh, pro wrestling. I don't know. (laughs) I don't even know what it's called yet. I got to get some art. I got to do a lot of things. But we got a lot of content coming out. Hope you guys are excited. And I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this uh, Hindsight is 2020. Oh, yeah. Speaking of that, me and my host for the week, Eric Forslund, Eric F., we beat the piss out of the Daily Fantasy KO guy. Stop listening to that show, man. It's garbage. Ugh. You know, we, 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 we put it on him this week. I won my head-to-head contest, and yes, uh, oh boy, I mean, it was kind of dirty. It was a dirty win because uh, oh boy had Tom Breeze. So I won it like 367 to 206, I believe. My co-host won by .5 points. Nonetheless, a win is a win. So that's a clean sweep, guys. We beat the piss out of the Daily Fantasy KO. Stop listening to their show. Listen to mine. And uh, I also promised that the audio issues will be done for. I figured out that in my area, there's a bandwidth limit, okay? And it had been messing with my, like, right now, I'm not doing a Skype video record, so you can see there's no problems. It's crystal clear. What was happening was I'm doing t- a HD video feeds from one, two, or three people and the audio, and with the bandwidth limit in my area, it was killing my pot, it was killing my uh uh the 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 data. So it's nothing I can do about it. I I did a bunch of different tricks to try and keep my presentation unique and you know with the fighter and me and my co-host all in video and it would work some weeks and it wouldn't others and it was because the bandwidth limit I think is like 49.9 megabytes per second in my area provided by charter. And it's 100 megabytes per, per second uh, is the premium like package. And I can't even get that in my area. So 
<sighs> so I, I'm going to be eliminating video from the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast. I don't. I think I might even eliminate it from 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 Black Market Picks, but I might not because it's just two of us. But yeah, the bandwidth in my area is doo doo. Uh, I, I was trying to figure out if it was my recorder or if it was something wrong with my laptop. Like, I was about to throw my new laptop in the toilet. I was like, this is trash. I can't use it. But it's actually just a bandwidth limit uh, from the high-definition video. So video is out from now on. We're just going to be doing audio only until I can get to a different area with better bandwidth. So, uh, sorry about that, guys. You know, I do the best to make this the best podcast on the world, trying to bring in UFC fighters, um, Invicta fighters, Bellator fighters, real high-level professionals from the best gyms around the world, having them come on here and talk to fights with us. And uh, I've succeeded at that. I've succeeded at getting a quality co-host. Uh, I just got to make sure I got to do away with the video because it's messing with the overall content of everything. So, Want to apologize for that, but yeah, that's all for today. Subscribe to us at the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast on iTunes at, uh, well, the, it's below. Or it's in the description if you're on SoundCloud or I think it's on, on iTunes too. So all the links are in the description of whatever you're watching. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Once again, this is Leroy Steffen, the master of Black Negro Jitsu, and I'm signing out. Peace out.